Hello everyone, this is Ishan and I love economics. In this video, I'm going to talk about perfect competition and monopoly, the two major types of markets. Perfect competition is where you have a lot of buyers, a lot of sellers who sell similar products. The main basis on which the competition takes place is price. There are no barriers to entry or to exit the market. If they are, they are very minor. And basically people that are the consumers have a good knowledge of what the product they're buying. That's your perfect competition. And then you have monopoly where you have just a single seller. One seller in the market, that's all. Very high barriers to entry because the monopolists will like to protect the market in which they are. And, and also a monopolist are, so basically what's a monopolist? A seller in a monopoly market is called a monopolist. Well, as a seller in a perfect competition is simply called perfect competition. So a monopolist, for example, is a price maker because they make their own price. Well, as a seller in a perfect competition is a price taker. These two concepts can be understood very well through diagrams. So let's move to the diagrams for a better explanation of perfect competition and monopoly. Okay, now let's look, have a look at perfect competition. For perfect competition, you need two diagrams next to each other, which is very important. So we're gonna draw two diagrams next to each other. Always label your diagrams correctly. This shows the entire market, whereas this shows an individual. Let's draw the market diagram. It's very straightforward. It's your regular demand and supply. Check the market equilibrium price. Now, an individual in a perfect competition is a price taker, not a price maker. So because an individual is a price taker, it's basically, this is the whole market, you're picking one person and expanding over here. Because they're a price taker, they will go with the market price. And this becomes your demand curve equal to average revenue equal to marginal revenue equal to price. This is basically your selling price. Then you have the marginal cost curve that goes upwards. Profit maximization in a perfect competition happens where price is equal to marginal cost or where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. This is where profit maximization takes place. So which point is that? It's where your MC meets your MR. That's this point. So go down. This becomes your profit maximizing quantity. You should produce so many units to maximize your profit and sell at this price so you get a maximum profit. Now, how do we know if a perfect competition, an individual seller in a perfect competition is making profit or they are making a loss? It all depends on the average total cost curve. So this is your average total cost curve one, for example. Bring up from this point where MR met MC, bring up the line to meet ATC. This becomes your cost price. As you can see, the cost price is more than the selling price. We have a loss. But what if the ATC was located below the demand, below the demand curve, the marginal revenue? Let's say this is where your ATC was. This is a second scenario. Check where ATC meets the same line. It meets it over here. So now this is your cost price. 
In the second scenario, the cost price is less than the selling price. Hence, this becomes your profit. Keep in mind, in a perfect competition, an individual will not shut down if they make a loss because that loss could be due to very high initial fixed costs, but they will shut down if their marginal revenues are less than the average variable costs. It means a seller in a perfect competition cannot even meet the variable costs such as paying people. In that situation, it will shut down. Now, what happens in the long run? Let's say this firm makes a profit in the long run. That's the second situation. If it makes a profit, more sellers enter the market. So let's say more sellers are now going to enter the market. And the supply curve increases. The supply increases, we have a new supply curve. Now this is long run. Previously what we saw was short run. Now we are looking at long run. So this becomes the new equilibrium price. Once again, price taker. So you go on over here. Check where MR, your MC meets your new MR. It meets here at this point. Check where the ATC passes. The ATC is passing through the same point, which means in the long run, there is zero economic profit. Now, economic profit is different to accounting profit because it takes into account the opportunity cost as well, which is the cost of things we give up in order to produce certain items. That was perfect competition for you. Now let's move on to monopoly. A monopolist is a price maker, not a price taker. Because in a monopoly, you have just one seller. They dictate the prices. But just dictating the prices does not mean they can maximize the profit. First of all, because they are a price maker, the marginal revenue and the demand curve will not be the same like we had in a perfect competition situation. This is our marginal revenue. This becomes our demand curve. This will be the marginal cost curve. Profit maximization takes place where MR meets MC, but this is for the quantity, profit maximizing quantity. So check where your MR is meeting your MC. It's here. This becomes your profit maximizing quantity. However, that's not the profit maximizing price. For the profit maximizing price, you need to extend this line to the demand curve. And off the demand curve, you get your profit maximizing selling price. So this becomes your profit maximizing selling price, and this becomes your profit maximizing output in a monopoly. Now, how does a monopolist, uh, how do we know if they make a profit or loss? Once again, check the location of the ATC. Let's say this is the first scenario where you have ATC 1. Take this line up, further up, to meet ATC. Extend it. This becomes your cost price. As you can see, once again, the selling price was less than the cost price. So this region shows a loss. Take another scenario. Use an ATC that passes below. That's your other scenario, your other ATC. As far as this ATC is concerned, it's passing below the demand curve. Once again, this is the line we are concerned with. This line, 
the one that passes through MC equal to MR. This line intersects your ATC here at this point. So let's say this is your new cost price in a new scenario. Hence, your cost price being lower than the selling price, the monopolist in this case makes a profit. Also bear in mind, a monopoly is not efficient, is not market efficient for a simple reason that if you need market efficiency, you need the demand to meet the supply. This acts like your supply curve. So if you sell or if you set a price and you sell a quantity where the demand meets the supply that's here, then you're really being efficient. But this efficiency is only seen in case of perfect competition, not in case of a monopoly. So keep in mind, in case of a monopoly, there will be a dead weight loss that will arise. That can be seen in this following diagram. PQ, let's say this is your demand curve and your MC, which acts like the supply curve. This is where the market will be efficient. However, that's not the case. We have a monopoly. It has a different marginal revenue. And it fixes the quantity right here. And it fixes the price up there. Profit maximizing output and profit maximizing selling price. Not here, not here. So what happens as a result is we have a dead weight loss, we have a shrunken consumer surplus, and the rest is our producer's surplus. What we see in this situation is that in case of a monopoly, there is a loss in the total surplus, the market is not at maximum efficiency, and the loss, that's the dead weight loss, the loss to the surplus, comes out from the consumer surplus, not the producer surplus. So consumers are the ones to lose in a monopoly. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope the concept of perfect competition is clear. Hopefully you have understood and you have a clarity now about how a perfect competition works in a long run and short run and how a monopoly is not an efficient market. Hope you enjoyed the video. Click like and subscribe and watch this space for more videos on economics. Cheers.